So what does it mean to be in Christ? Well, you might spend 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the world. And boy, by then, you're, you're pretty rooted in this mess, you know? I don't know that you could ever get yourself out of it. I don't think I could have gotten myself out of it. We need some Holy Ghost help to come along and get us out of this and put us in something else. And to be saved by grace literally means that we don't have to do anything to be saved except believe that Jesus is who he says that he is and that he did what he said that he did. If you believe that he died for you, was raised from the dead, you truly believe that in your heart and you confess it with your mouth, the Bible says you will be saved. So at the exact moment that you're saved, you get replanted in another life. Amen? Just that quick. And that's just almost too good to be true. Now, who in their right mind would want to just keep jumping back and forth from pot to pot all the time? Once you get out of that, then you need to stay put in Christ. But there's something that has to happen for this to all work right. The moment that you're in Christ, all these things become possibilities. You're a new creature, new beginning. Everything's new. The past is gone. Brand new beginning. And then there's all these new creation realities. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. God will meet all of our needs. We're talented and gifted and we're anointed. And oh, it's just all so wonderful. And we hear about it in church and we get so excited. And then we go home. We can't seem to make any of it work. <laughs> Amen. Boy, we hear a message about how important our words are. And so we make a decision. We're going to go home and we're going to just say all good stuff. And it just never works. It just doesn't work until, <laughs> until we've been in this long enough that we get rooted, come on, rooted and grounded in this new life. And getting roots takes time. Getting rooted in something means you've got to stick with it for a long time. I'll never forget the woman that came to me put her hands on her hips, she, right down there at the altar, the stage wasn't this high, so I was pretty level with her, and she said, I want my money back. <laughs> That's what she said, I want my money back. I said, what do you mean you want your money back? She said, listen, I've been doing what you said to do for two weeks, <laughs> and nothing has changed. I want my money back. I tell you what, it was all I could do to keep from laughing right in the woman's face. I thought, oh, honey, <laughs> honey, 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 you've been doing this for two weeks? <laughs> Try 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Try after five years, not feeling like you've made any progress at all, but actually, we are making progress. But sometimes when you've got such a huge mess in your life, like a 40-year mess, I don't know why we get frustrated with God if, if he doesn't straighten out overnight what it's taken us 40 years to do. Amen? So everything new is inside, and it's got to make its way from the inside to the outside. Now, I have a list here called Knowing Who I Am in Christ, and I actually wrote this list. And if you put into your little computer, Knowing Who I Am in Christ, the first thing that will pop up is this list by Joyce Meyer. I think that's cool. I have made the internet. Amen? And I, you know, there's no way that I could sit here and read all this to you because you wouldn't, you wouldn't focus long enough. But it's three and a half pages worth, and I think that you should get on the internet and get yourself a copy, knowing who I am in Christ. And it should come up first. But I'm just going to read you a few of these things that the Bible says, if you're a believer, how many of you are believers in Christ? Okay. If you're a believer, all of these things are already yours. I don't care if you look like they're yours. I don't care if you act like they're yours. I don't care if you feel like they're yours or if anybody else believes they're yours. They are yours. And until you know they're yours, regardless of what it looks like, 
See, in God's economy, you believe it first and then you see it. You can't wait to see it and then believe it. You believe it first and then you see it. Your believing becomes your living. So as long as you believe you're a mess, you're going to continue to be a mess. But when you start waking up in the morning, you lay in your bed and you think, I'm anointed. I have gifts and talents. God loves me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And then the devil kind of, you know, got that little demon sitting here on your shoulder. Well, <laughs> you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Remember what you did yesterday? Come on. How many of you hear that? Remember what you did yesterday? Yeah. You, you, know, you know what you did. Yeah, you know what you did. And you know, really, you just need to learn to get to the point where you say, thank you for reminding me because now I just remember how good God is to forgive me and wash it all away. And if you think that I'm just making up some weird story, I'm not. This is the way that I live. And unless you're willing to learn to live like this, you're not living according to the Bible, and you're not ever going to really experience the freedom that you want to have. You've got to learn how to fight like a Christian. And the way you fight like a Christian is you fight with the Word of God, because the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Amen? So, first one on my list is I'm complete in Christ. So that means I'm complete if I'm single. I don't need to have a husband to be complete. I'm complete if I'm a widow. I can hang out with married people. I don't need to feel like everybody else feels. I'm complete if I don't have a college degree. Matter of fact, I'm complete if I didn't even graduate from high school. We are complete not in the way we look or the job we have or who we know or the label in our clothes or what side of the tracks we live on. We are complete in Christ. Amen? So now you're getting just a little bit taller. I can feel it. See, when you start to know who you are in Christ, you go from this. Everything, you got to get just... Man, by the time you go out of here tonight, you're going to be like, don't mess with me. I'm God's kid. I'm alive with Christ. I like that one. Whoo, I'm alive. <laughs> I have the peace of God that passes understanding. I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am sanctified. I am redeemed. I am justified. I am holy. All of these things we are in Christ. We hope you enjoyed this teaching. To get more from Joyce, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.